Hello YouTube, I'm Orange Peter, and uh, today I'm making another tutorial for you guys. Today's tutorial is going to be about smooth camera transitions. So, let's take a look. Bop. Bop. Alright, so if that looks cool to you, keep on watching. So, uh, today's tutorial we're going to be using animation curves to do this effect. Um, let's go ahead and walk through the prerequisites. Alrighty. So, uh, for as far as the starting point of the code, um, you can check out the description uh, for the starting code and the ending code if you want to start from there. Um, you can also uh, follow my tutorials to recreate this project for yourself. Um, there's two tutorials to, that I'm going to refer you to. One of them is my camera tutorial, which is going to in turn refer back to my platform tutorial so you can uh, figure out how to make a player move and make the cameras move with it. Um, and then the other tutorial I'm going to refer you to is my animation curve tutorial. So the animation curve stuff should be relatively easy to follow in this tutorial, but it goes about 50% slower in that other tutorial, and we'll go into slightly more details. So if you want the full animation curve experience, you can head on over there. Um, so most of the code I have here in terms of these objects and whatnot is from my camera tutorial. Uh, but for as far as animation curves tutorial, um, I have this step towards held over, which so make sure to include that. And um, for as far as stuff from the camera tutorial, also keep in mind that I have this shorter camera script where I have a bunch of custom camera functions that I use. So I won't be using the Game Maker camera functions because I find them big and hard to type. So I use these other ones. Uh, more details on that in the camera tutorial. Um, is that everything I want to talk about? Yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. So, in the camera tutorial, I um, I had logic in the player step event in order to control the camera and make the camera follow the player. And for this tutorial, I'm actually going to um, do that in a separate object, oh, camera control. And then if we go to the step event here, I'm, I'll just go ahead and add that. So here's what it looked like. Here's what, what we went over in that tutorial. So um, we set the camera to have the player centered x in the x direction, have it kind of be offset in the y direction. Then we have logic to keep the camera in the room. And then we apply the camera's position. And we can go ahead and test that to make sure to change our room order here. We can go ahead and test that to show you how the camera follow logic usually works. Uh, and I need to populate this room. Shoot. Just going to add some solids and a player and our camera controller. Okay, but now let's give it a try. There you go. This is like our starting point where the camera just follows the player. Excellent. Um, all right, so now that we got that set up, um, we're gonna. I told you I'll be using animation curves for the um, for the screen transitions. So let's go ahead and jump in there. So I'm gonna call this anim um, uh, ba -ba -ba camera transition. Kind of long, but oh well. Maybe I'll, hmm, now that works. Maybe I would have called it cam trans or something like that. Something shorter. I might if I was doing this on my own, but I guess we can go with the verbose version for the tutorial. Okay. So in the beginning, we're gonna be at zero. At the end, we're going to be at one, meaning that we are completed. So this will work pretty well on its own, um, where it'll just smoothly transition from whatever the starting camera position is to the end. But it actually would look a lot better if we made it kind of add some ease in and ease out, had it like slowly kind of build up momentum, go fast, then start slowing down towards the end. So there's a couple ways you could do that here. I can kind of add some points here, like like so, um, and then smooth it out to make sure it doesn't move a whole lot in the beginning, goes faster, moves some more. But just to give you some more options, um, another way to do it, and I think this is how the pros do it, as I understand it, is they go into Bezier mode, and then in Bezier mode you can change the slopes on the individual points. So we can drag these out to make it also do a similar thing. So um, there we go. We have an ease in and ease out. Hi, it's me from the future. So I'm in Game Maker Beta right now, 
and I'm here because future release of GameMaker will have uh, this feature called Curve Libraries. So I want to show you how you would use that real quick in case you two are also from the future and this is standard. So the way we do it is we'd start from 0 to 1 just like previously. Uh, there we go, that's about 1. And then, oh, let me get this lower. there we go. And then uh, we'd go into Bezier mode and then in future releases there'll be a series of presets available and these happen to cover most of my tutorials like five out of seven of the tutorials ended up being like conveniently set via a preset so in this case um, we want to set the setting to ease in and ease out so that it follows this trend and it goes slow fast slow so there you go and then you have loads of options pretty much any of these will work and I recommend you experiment with them but maybe I'll just go with quart and then you can see it does pretty much what we want. Okay, uh, that's how you do this using the curves library. Um, now back to the tutorial. So now let's go back to camera control. And I'm going to need some variables in my creation event. So first we're going to need a variable for whether or not we're in transition. Start with that at false. It's not in transition in the beginning. Then we're going to need a variable I'm going to call transcx, which you're going to set to zero. So cx is what I'm saying is the x position along the curve. So we start at zero and then we go to one as we animate. And then I'm gonna to need to keep track of the starting and ending position of the camera, which will, again, will make more sense later. So I have variables for that, the start and the target. And then I'm gonna have um, another variable for the transition seconds. This is how quickly I want the, trans the camera to animate. All right, so we've got that. Now I need to refactor this a little bit. So I have a companion um, camera tutorial for do how to do camera shake. And uh, I want them both to be independent, but I also would like you to be able to do both of them together. So I'm going to try organizing my code as much as possible so that you can mix them together. So this player follow logic, we only want to do that if we're not in transition. So I'm going to add an in transition if statement. So if we're not in transition, we want to follow the player. If, we're, if we are in transition, we want to do other logic. And later on, if you add camera shake or some other effects, you'd add that here too. So this is our standard operating procedure. This is in transition. And then if we're then either way, we want to always clamp within the room. We want to apply the position. Um, so this is where you apply camera shake. Let's see. So I actually, I think I want to keep the camera static. Um, if we're not in transition, just to keep things simpler. So I'm actually going to comment out this player follow logic, and instead I'm going to be setting the cam X to be whatever our current camera position actually is, and same with cam Y. And then I need some logic for how we enter the transition, because by, by default we're going to be in this section, and then we need to have logic for how we transition into the transition state. Okay, so this should be fairly simple. Um, if our player is outside of our view to the left or right, we want to enter a transition. Make sense? Cool. So um, the way we're going to do that is if player.x is greater than cam r, if the x position is bigger than the right side of our camera, or if player.x is smaller than cam l, then we're in transition. So we're essentially doing transition in transition equals true, but there's actually several other variables that we need to define for the setup process. So Whenever there's like a big setup like that, I like to defer to a function so that way we can just, instead of having to remember all the setup process for entering a transition, we can just call a function. So I'm going to call the start transition function, and then I will define that function in our create event. So function start transition, like so. So setting transition to true is going to be one of the things we want to do. Um, other thing we want to do is if we look at these variables here, we want our transition animation um, x to be equal to zero. So we're at the start of the transition. And we need to set these start cam x and target cam x as well. So start cam x is going to be whatever our current cam or x is. That's where the start of the transition is going to be at. Uh, the target is going to be, let's see, we're going to be adding a full width of to the camera, but it's a little bit tricky because we need to think about if we want to add it to the left or to the right, if we want to add or subtract it. Um, so let's see. I'm going to say if the player's x is bigger than cam r, 
it's bigger than the right side of the screen, then we want to add it. So then this is going to be equal to the start plus our camera's width. Okay. Then we can follow similar logic and say if the player's x is less than the left side of the camera, then um, bu bu that we can add a minus there. Okay, that looks good. So now that we've have our transition started, then we're, our step event will take place in this part of the if statement. We'll be bypassing all of the logic here. Um, and why did they make that a capital Y? Silly me. And then for as far as what we want to do here, first we want to move our our CX variable, our position along the animation curve. We want to move that to the uh, right. So here's how I'm going to do that. All right. So I made this this script during the animation curves tutorial, and it lets me kind of have a variable smoothly mo move towards a target. So here I'm passing in the current variable. I'm passing in the target, what I want the variable to become, and then I'm passing in a step, how much I want it to be increased or decreased by to get it to the target. So uh, this section, our trend seconds is equal to 1, room speed is equal to 30, which is which can be defined as steps per second. Here we're saying we want it to get there in 30 steps, which means we want, since we want it to travel a total distance of 1, we want to move by 1 30th every step. Yeah. So that will smoothly transition us. And then, then we got animation curve logic. So I'm going to make that a to-do. So um, I'll do handle animation curve stuff later. I'm going to do it with just CX first to give you a sense of what we're going to do. So CX will move from 0 to 1 as we transition. So we want to transition from the start to the target using this CX variable. And in those situations, lerp is a great thing to use. So there you pass in two values and the amount you want to transition between those two values. So the amount we pass in will be between 0 and 1. 0 will, will return value 1. 1 will return value 2. 0.5 or something in between will return something in between. So our value 1 is going to be our start. Value 2 is going to be our target. And then the amount we want to go by is CX. And again, I'll be having this follow the animation curve later. So this is what I want CAMX to be. If we're at our target, then we want to exit the transition because we are at our target. Um, I'm going to say if C CX equals 1, meaning we completed our animation, then we are no longer in transition. So this should already look pretty good. Or not. Maybe not. Um, so here I called it CX, but I should really be calling it TransCX because that's what I named it in my creation event. My bad. I have a couple other spots too. Oh my gosh. And then in addition to setting our cam X, we make sure that we have our cam Y set because um, these sections of code are responsible for setting the initial cam X, cam Y. So I want cam Y to equal to um, cam Y, like that. Okay. There we go. So this could work right here. Um, it'll look nicer once we apply animation curve, but. One other thing I want to kind of do is I want the player to be able to stop moving. I want all the focus to be on the camera condition. I don't want to be able to have the player keep moving. So the way I'm going to do that is plain and simple. I'm going to go to the player step event. And I'm going to say, if the camera is in condition, exit. We're going to bypass all of the player's logic if the camera is in transition. So that's the quick and dirty way to do that. Now let's make this follow the animation curve. So whenever you're working with animation curves, you're going to need two functions. The first function is to get the channel within the uh, animation curve. Uh, so that's going to be that. So for the channel, you're going to pass in which animation curve you're interested in and which channel within the animation curve. So we just want the first channel. So that's going to be indexed at 0. So we're going to pass in 0 for our channel. And then that's going to give us our channel. So I'm going to say ch is equal to that. And next, we're, we're going to want to evaluate a position along the channel. So that's anim curve evaluate, like so. We pass in the channel. We pass in our position along the curve. And this will give us back our um, uh, y position along the curve. So now, below, whenever I use transition cx, I'm going to use cy. So previously, when we were just passing in cx, 
it was kind of like we were saying cy equals cx, so it was as if this was a straight line. But now that we're retrieving c or y position along the curve and using that instead, it's going to follow our nice ease in, ease out pattern. All right, let's give this a shot. So um, now when we leave this screen, that looks beautiful. So you can see slow, fast, slow, and uh, <laughs> nothing more to it. It just looks really good. Um, so uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, just before you leave, I wanted to mention that this is part of a series where I'm taking my Castle Platformer tutorial series, and I'm amping it up by adding animation curves wherever I can. So if you want to get a sense for all the other ways you can use animation curves, check out more videos in that series. And also, at the end of each one of these tutorials, I like to talk about animation principles. So every aspiring animator, the first thing to learn about is the 12 animation principles. And a lot of these tutorials happen to coincide with those animation principles. So um, the animation pr principle for this one, which fits very well, is ease in, ease out. A lot of things when you're trying to animate it in an organic, natural way, you'll tend to have that ease, out, ease in, ease out pattern. And this is no exception to that, where it looks just really smooth and natural. So for more information on ease in, ease out, I recommend checking out Alan Becker's tutorial, our video explaining the concept. Um, so that is everything for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my future animation curve tutorials.